Hello and welcome to the Agricultural Museum's virtual symposium. This presentation is Celeries and Tomatoes, Digital Agricultural History. I'm Deborah Reed, Curator of Agriculture and the Environment at the Henry Ford in Dearborn, Michigan, and I want to share with you what I've been doing during COVID-19, uh, but what the institution and I do normally, and that is prepare, select items from the collection and prepare them for digitization and then deliver them digitally uh, via the Henry Ford's webpage for audiences throughout the world, really. Uh, I'm going to provide two very specific case studies that include a blog done on celery in Western Michigan, uh, Western Michigan from the 1870s to the 1930s was one of the leading producers of celery in the United States. And while not discussing the content per se, you can read that in the blog. What I want to do is talk about some of the uh, artifacts digitized and then delivered through that blog for audiences far and wide. And the other one that I that is recently available, but that I'm not really going to talk about, uh, but it's there for your review, is Tomatoes, another blog that emphasizes the assets that we have, archival as well as artifactual, and incorporating some of the three-dimensional assets that are on exhibit in the museum. Uh, the Henry Ford Museum of American Innovation, as well as Greenfield Village. But that's for your review later. The focus of this, uh, the digital assets that we have um, identified and then processed. So there's a small team in this huge institution that does this. Uh, for those of you not familiar with the Henry Ford, we have, uh, well, prior to COVID, a large staff that worked in five venues, including an archival uh, research center, the Benson Ford Research Center, that manages about five miles in linear feet of archival material, as well as uh, the Henry Ford Museum of American Innovation, where thousands of artifacts are on exhibit from holdings of millions and the Greenfield Village, which is 83 acres and as many buildings that span centuries from uh, the mid 1700s to the 1900s. Uh, trying to determine what artifacts to feature involves a curatorial team of eight and a registrarial group that manages the the uh, cataloging and a digitization team both uh, photographers for the three-dimensional artifacts and uh, archival processing folk that have expertise in in accurate scanning then the catalogers registrars process the information or input the information into our collections database system and that is then harvested and made available on the web. Now all of that is done uh, by a team of, of individuals in addition to other work that they do as part of their processing of archival collections and collections management duties. The curators step back in when it comes to writing these summaries that you see here for this celery crate and then taking these items and interpreting them. So putting them into expert sets or blogs. So uh, you, <laughs> you may not uh, think this is very difficult, but uh, when you have a box like this, how do you interpret it in this summary narrative of no more than 400 characters? Uh, it becomes an exercise in emphasis 
engagement because you want to make it appealing so that folks want to learn more and accurate. So here's the, an example of a summary that I wrote for this crate uh, Mich of, of Michigan celery specifically. Um, it was called by the law a square crate, even though it is obviously not. It was one of six sizes specified by the Michigan law of 1935, picking that law because this is an uh, early 20th century crate, but its date is not known, specific date is not known. The green celery stencil left little doubt about its contents, nor did the name <laughs> celery, but growers had the incentive to pack their best product in crates that bore their name. And these ensured that the buyers, and given the time frame, it's prohibition. So from wholesale grocery go, grocers to restaurant chefs and speakeasy operators, we are in an era of prohibition. Uh, they, they needed to satisfy their customers. So actually by 1935, prohibition is over. Um, that law, came after prohibition ended, and yet it, it could have been dated before that. So anyway, these, these are things to provoke thought as well as engage audiences. A couple more examples uh, will follow, but this is an, a summary of the specific content for each object that is also included on the internet. Uh, so in addition to the summary, you find the artifact name if there is a creator, keywords that it is uh, basically subject terms that you can use to find additional items relevant to this. Its location, if it's on exhibit or not, the object identification number, which is the accession number, so the year of accession, the object within that accession, the zero means that it was found in collections, and then the number of object that year number of accession and then the object within that accession that year. If there is a credit in terms of a donor's name or some other standard language, uh, material, color, dimensions, and any inscriptions. So this is the standard content that is uh, posted online for every digitized object in our collections. A few more examples. The pixelation of this does not appear when you increase the size, but I include it because the Henry Ford has a significant Heinz collection, including uh, the home of Heinz, in which he began producing his, his Heinz products and uh, extensive archival collection. So it's one of our one of many <laughs> collections that relate to food. Uh, and food processing, production and processing. And uh, I thought I'd show you uh, one of the celery items from that collection um, with the summary pulled out. And another item from that, uh, that we uh, included in that uh, celery blog, this is patent cereal, you could say, as opposed to patent medicine. And this was a fun summary to write. The vegetable eaten around the world attracted the attention of health food entrepreneurs like Dr. Vincent C. Price. And the Triabita Celery Food Company of Battle Creek produced this cereal. And try saying celery cereal many times fast. But if you were a vegetarian or infirm in the early 1900s, you might have sought out Dr. Price's celery cereal. And then oral interviews. We have uh, had the pleasure of getting to know Melvin Parson better, who is a market gardener and social entrepreneur in a community near Dearborn, Ypsilanti. And, uh, and Ann Arbor. And his oral interview is available in clips, and this clip uh, discusses healthy food, including his, his uh, enjoyment of celery. Now, not everything has narratives, <laughs> and we, we need them. So this is an example of a delivery truck packed with celery 
moving out of a, a wholesale warehouse in in uh, California, Los Angeles specifically. And something like this would involve me as a curator of agriculture, as well as our curator of transportation to make sure that we are accurate in all ways in the content. And we have to do this in 400 characters or less. It's, it's, a, it's a fun activity and one that involves an extensive amount of research to get it right. So, the bigger context for this, uh, we are fast approaching the 100th, or the 100th, the 100,000th digitized asset. And the team is considering how to mark this milestone. And our senior curator, Donna Braden, has posed these four thoughts. And I think these thoughts are relevant to us. Uh, no matter what size of institution you have or how many archival or artifactual uh, items in your collection you have, you can think of and perhaps justify a digital presence for those items, some selected, um, by thinking about how does digitizing an artifact in the collection lead to uh, increased awareness of a collection, perhaps then a new acquisition or a new donation. How does it change your relationship with a donor in that their item is uh, no longer carefully cared for in storage, but also publicly available in an additional format? Has it has the digitization process led to uncovered or encouraged new interpretation of the object or group of objects? And I would say that every single uh, item I have had the pleasure of writing a summary for has caused me to think about that object in a different way, a deeper way, a more nuanced way. And then does it help you create new stories, uh, tell, tell stories in different ways by grouping items together? So these are, these are things to ponder um, and, to, and to discuss more. Have questions? I'm Deborah Reed, Curator of Agriculture and the Environment at the Henry Ford, and I look forward to fielding your comments and questions. Thank you.